state the domain of f of x, g of x, and the two composite functions. So I rewrote out our, our functions here for us. So this is what our f of x function was. So there's a restriction with the radical. Remember that x minus 1 must be greater than or equal to 0. So x must be greater than or equal to 1. So that would mean that the domain would be x such that x is greater than or equal to 1, where x is the element of all real numbers. You can also picture that graph as that root graph shifted right one, which confirms the x is greater than 1. Number two, a parabola. You can picture the shape if you wish, but we know there's no restriction, so the domain of g of x is just x is the element of all real numbers. Let's look at our first composite function. With composite functions, you need to consider the inner function, which in this case is g of x. So the inner function is g of x is equal to x squared, which means there is no restriction. So that would just mean x is the element of real numbers. This isn't my final answer, so I'm not, I'm just writing the, that there's no restrictions there. And then we need to figure, consider the composite function. So the composite function is the square root of x squared minus y. If you remember what this graph looks like, remember that to graph a radical, you would graph what's under the radical first. So that would be a parabola shifted down one over one up one. So you'd have this general shape right here. And then you would square root all the y values, keeping, y values, keeping in mind anything below the x-axis would remain the same. Your invariant points of one would stay the same. So you would have this general shape here Remember, it kind of bubbles out. So your restrictions would be x is less than or equal to negative 1, and x is greater than or equal to 1. You could also find this algebraically by looking at the restrictions. And so x squared minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. So remember to solve for a quadratic um, inequality, you would need to consider where the x-intercepts are. So x squared, if you move that 1 over, would equal 1 x would equal plus or minus 1, which we know from graphing this too. And then you can use roots and test points, case analysis, sign analysis, but I use the graphical approach. I know that my intercepts are 1 and negative 1, and it's a parabola that opens up. And because this is greater than 0, I look at which part of the graph is above the x-axis. So that's this part right here, which is x is less than or equal to negative 1 and this part right here, which is x is greater than or equal to one. So you get the same restrictions either way. So this is just a review of a radical domain graph. So the domain then, we don't, the inner function doesn't add any other restrictions. So the domain is what you would have for the restrictions on the composite function itself. And then when we look at number four, the final one, so f of x is the inner graph. So f of x is equal to the square root of x minus 1. Remember, there was a restriction on that. And then our composite function is y equals x is minus 1. one. That's linear, which means there's x e real. So there's no restrictions. But we have to include the restriction on that inner function as well. So that means that our domain for our final answer there is x is greater than or equal to 1, where x is the element of all real numbers. So this is the one to watch out for, because had you just looked at the domain of your final answer, you would have said x e real, but you have to consider your inner function, which is why it's important that when you actually write this function, that I would now want to include that restriction in my equation. Otherwise, I'd have no way to realize that there was a restriction in there based on the function itself.